Lovely. Well, look, good morning, welcome. Um, you will know probably that my name is Simon. I introduce myself every single time we're together because, um, not because I think you might have forgotten my name, but because I've got genuinely faith that there's going to be people in the room who don't have any point of reference for who we are. And so I always want to introduce myself. Um, but have you ever wondered why I'm called Simon? Um, I I haven't until I was preparing for this morning. I thought, I wonder why I'm called Simon. Why did my parents give me that name? So I rang my mum uh, yesterday and I said, Mum, a uh, bit of a random question I realised, but why am I called Simon? And uh, we, without really missing a heartbeat, she said, well, I really like Roger Moore in The Saint. Um, and it's some generation, I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, but The Saint, Simon Templar, so she said she liked that name. Um, and the name Simon had no negative connotation, so they didn't know anybody that was nasty whose name was Simon, or uh, they never had any trouble with a Simon before. So, um, and if you've ever had to name something, you'll know that it's it actually can be really quite difficult, can't it? Um, so, like, I, I quite like the name Shark. Um, we're not dog lovers or owners, but if we had a dog, I'd like to call my dog Shark. I'd be like, yeah, this is my dog. His name's Shark. Um, which is fine until you walk him down the beach and you start shouting for him, shark, shark. I mean, it's going to cause pandemonium, isn't it? I mean, it's quite a responsibility when it comes to naming anything. Um, my name apparently means hearer or hearing or listening uh, in Hebrew. Uh, but in Greek, uh, it's derived from an adjective meaning flat nosed. So <laughs> there you go. When it came to naming our kids, so as you know, Fee and I have got three kids we weren't as strategic as looking up the meaning or anything like that. It was more a case of coming up with names that didn't automatically make you think about naughty kids that were either in school or in the, the kids' church that we, we led. Um, and then when we found out we were having a daughter with Katie, the challenge was then finding a girl's name for a girl that I hadn't dated. Um, different cultures put all kinds of, uh, sorry, different cultures put far more meaning on the names. Um, in many Eastern cultures uh, and contexts, a great follow-up question to finding out somebody's name is asking them what it means. And often they'll be able to give you not just an interpretation of what their name means, but why they were given that name. Now, many names in the Bible have been given to people for specific reasons. So Abraham and Sarah, in their old age, when they conceived, Sarah's initial response was laughter. It was like, this is ridiculous. Um, so they called their son, he laughs, which is basically the interpretation of what Isaac means. And when Mary and Joseph found out that she was going to have a baby, the angel told them, call him Yeshua or Jesus, meaning to deliver or to rescue. Now, you'll know that there are whole sections of scripture, in fact, whole books of the Bible, which seem to be dedicated to names. The genealogies of the family trees of Adam and Eve in Genesis 5 or much of one chronicles and and even in the new testament matthew kicks off his gospel with the genealogy of jesus and gives 17 verses over to names and if we're honest <laughs> we can often skip through the the lists of names and the lists of tribes and the numbers and all that sort of thing can't we um but what happens in the midst of a giant register mo with names most of which we couldn't pronounce in one chronicles 4 verse 9 there's we suddenly get this like little insight into more than just a name. We get a little insight to into, into a chap called Jabez. <laughs> what was funny is last night my autocorrect turned his name into Janet, but thankfully I noticed. But let me read on. So Jabez, so verse 9, so this is from 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 4, verse 9. Jabez was more honourable than his brothers. Now that's, that's worth a nod, isn't it? That's worth stopping for a moment and saying there was something about Jabez, like the way he lived, the way he conducted himself, the way he interacted with his family and with his community, which the writer highlight this little attribute of his, that he was more honourable than his brothers. He was a good guy. Either that or his brothers were really, really awful. But who wouldn't want a reputation for being honourable? being honest and fair and respectable. And the writer goes on and says, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. So in a culture where the meaning of your name really carries some significant pain, 
Now, Fee and I, as I said, are fortunate to have three kids. Um, and I was blessed, I think, to be at their births and can confirm that pain is involved, both in pregnancy and in the birthing process. But, but not once in our many discussions about names did we think, oh, I know, let's call this one pain. Or how about varicose vein? Or maybe let's, perfect, stretch mark. Let's call this one stretch mark. So my guessing is that Jabez was a really tough pregnancy and a really tough birth. And through gritted teeth, his mum just goes, just call him pain. And the text doesn't mention his dad or a, a father figure, but it is obvious that he came into a broken world in a difficult way. Uh, but what is really clear is that he prayed his way out of it. At some point in his life, he would have come to understand the brokenness and maybe even the background to his name, which makes how he responds in prayer so much more poignant. In verse 10, Jabez called upon the God of Israel. He prayed. And not just the kind of prayer that you whisper when you're in a restaurant and you don't really want the waitress to overhear you because you're embarrassed. No, he called upon the Lord saying, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. And God granted what he asked. And God granted what he asked. What a great encouragement for us, whether you read that 2,000 years ago, or whether you're reading it and hearing it for the first time today, this world is still broken. Some would say the brokenness is that much more on display right now. And Paul says in Romans that creation's groaning, it's longing, as in the pains of childbirth, to be set free and to be made whole again. But this prayer gives us faith in answered prayer. And it's split into four sections, and maybe at a later date, we haven't got time this morning, but we'll look at each section together. But First, God, first he asked God to bless him. So to clarify, it's okay to pray that God blesses you. It's not selfish, it's not self-centered, it's not egotistical. It may sound slightly prosperity gospel, but it is okay to ask God to bless you. He loves you. Now we need to understand that our understanding of blessing and God's understanding of blessing may be on different pages. So if you're praying, oh God, that you would bless me and, you're, and in your heart that looks like a new car or a big bank balance or 0% body fat, then you may find that your idea of blessing is pretty eucentric. But if your prayer for blessing is motivated by wanting more intimacy with God, to hear his voice, to know his will, to grow in faith. And I can assure you that that is a righteous prayer. And he goes on to say, enlarge my border. Give me more increased influence. Give me more responsibility. His prayer and our prayer can be, God, help me to be so much more effective in this life for your advancement of your kingdom. And my prayer is that for each of us at this time, we'd see a massive increase in our influence and success in those areas. Not that we would make a name for ourselves, but that Jesus would be glorified. And thirdly, he asked God, he asked that God's hand may be with him. His prayer is, God, would you please stay close to me? That you, I would know your presence, Heavenly Father. Now we all know what it's like. You can sometimes feel someone walking in a room before you see them. Jabez wanted to know God was with him in all that he did. And finally, he prayed that God would keep him from harm so that it might, might not bring him pain. The very thing that spurned Jabez's name, he wanted nothing to do with. None of us want to experience pain, but many of us do. And I, I wonder, and I, I'll probably come back to this in weeks to come, but I wonder what Jabez meant by this. Was it physical? Was it emotional? Was it spiritual? Regardless, right now, I recognise that some of us may be feeling trapped, fearful, powerless and weak. But this great little prayer reminds us that there is a way out. There's a God who hears our prayers and who does alter our circumstances. One commentator on this passage lands his summary with this. And I want you to receive this and we're going to finish. Your birth is not your destiny. The world is not your master. There is a God in the heavens. He is powerful. He is merciful. And he answers.
prayers. May God bless you today in whatever it is that you're doing. I want to encourage you, look at this prayer, 1 Chronicles 4. Look at this prayer, pray it for yourself, pray it for your family, pray it for this nation. May God bless you, I love you, and we'll see you on Sunday.